If you're among the thousands who work from home, and maybe still are, at least some of the time, you know the whole work-life balance really got out of whack because work at home turned into the same place for so long. Well, Joel Patterson is a workplace and business expert with timely advice on balancing work and life. Joel, you never probably never thought before this past year that this would be such a huge topic for so many people. Yeah, I can say that's just one of many things that happened in the last year that I was never expecting to actually take place, for sure. Right, but yet, here we are. That work-life balance phrase came in a while back, and uh, but now it's uh, it's top of mind. Um, we have some tips. You have some tips for uh, for managers and and others who are leaders. Um, the the whole thing with hours have had to be flexible now. Yeah, there's a few things. First of all, I'll mention with work-life balance, uh, a lot of people throw that term around, and it's a good term, but you've also got to take in mind that, that sometimes people view that as being one's good and the other's bad, hmm. and that's where I, I run into a little bit of a struggle. And, and the sooner that you recognize that if, if somebody had a bad day at home, they're probably going to have a bad day at work and vice versa. So that's the first thing I, I really encourage people to keep in mind, that, that there are definitely, that it, it is interchangeable. Um, but once you've actually got to the point where you're trying to figure out ways to keep your employees motivated, uh, first of all, yeah, be flexible with your hours. Uh, especially these days, remote work is not going away. I think it's a matter of uh, what each company decides is best for them as far as you know, how many days they let them work from home versus at, uh, at the office. they got to find a different solution for everyone. Um, another thing is to make sure your people are taking PTO. And if you're, uh, you know, if you've got vacation banks, don't be hesitant to, to actually do that. That stuff's really important simply to make sure that you're recharging, that you have the, 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 the freshest perspective on a, an issue that you could possibly have. Sounds simple. And people always want to, you know, go on vacation, of course, but you'd be surprised, especially during the pandemic, how many people don't want to do that. And the, the weird thing is that a lot of people have been working from the exact same place that they watched movies with their, their family <laughs> and they've got a laptop in their in their lap during the day. And there's no separation there. So yeah. it's very important to, to get away from it and take some time. Joel, what have you, what have you seen as a, a problem with that, that we're, all of this is all mixed up together? Um, is it a problem for employees that we're, we're not separating this well enough? Yeah, it's a big problem. And the, the term that everybody likes to throw around these days is Zoom fatigue. And that's a real thing. You know, if you're on a video conference call and then you end it and you're immediately on another one, you don't have the ability to recharge. Here's a, here's a funny thing that most people don't think about. When you're in person and you're having a meeting, you don't sit 18 inches across from them, right? Right. And, but in a Zoom call, that's actually what you're doing. And so you're hyper-focused on what people look like, what you look like. You know, are, are they rolling their eyes? I mean, there's just so many other things that your brain never has an opportunity just to relax. And so while productivity has stayed high in general during the pandemic, uh, burnout has also increased. So it's really important that people find ways to separate business and work in order to keep a fresh perspective on both. And that moves us into uh, your point about health issues. You, there really needs to be a strong emphasis now on employee health, fitness, um, healthy eating. How can an employer help with that? Well, a very simple way is is just keeping people active. So something that we do at our at our office is we have a step challenge. There are lots of apps out there that, that allow you to to keep a, a scoreboard of what everybody's doing and and hope that everybody gets their ten thousand a day. Or you could have on the weekend a, a, an individual competition between people. There's lots of different ways that you can keep people moving, uh, and then also encouraging them to eat well. Uh, lots of gyms have uh, discounts for employers. So that's another thing to consider. But it, even if it's just going outside and taking a walk, yeah. it makes a, t a complete difference in your, your mental perspective. And, and you say as employees, we also ought to have just some time during the day where we could really like flex time, like, um, I don't know, creative space where there's not really anything I have to do. Yeah, you need to, you need to be able to have uh, or allocate some time just to be there for lack of a better term you know free up a little bit of headspace so that you can do some creative thinking the great example is how many times have you gone to bed worrying about a problem and then you wake up in the morning and you know the answer yeah that's the same concept it's, it's just letting your brain do its thing and if you think you're focused and yet you're a really hard driver and you work really hard and you want to be proud of that that's great but you're going to be more creative and more productive with your solutions if you give yourself a little bit of leeway and some time to relax 
And, and Joel, one more that you want us to all remember, um, this is for managers, leaders, and really, for, I think, for fellow employees, that we should, we should check in with each other and uh, see how people really are doing. Yeah, this is important for everyone. You've got, and, and it's one thing to say that you do it. It's another thing to actually follow through and be intentional. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. I really encourage employers to take two minutes. All you need is two minutes to reach out to a couple of people and just, hey, how are you? You know, is there anything I can do for you? Uh, you know, even get a, a one to 10 score that says, how are you feeling mentally and emotionally? Are you you're doing all right? Uh, just doing that is going to make them feel better, but also it allows you to keep a good finger on the pulse of what's going on in your organization. Because I promise you there are things these days that you're completely unaware of. And if nobody asks the question, chances are they aren't going to tell you. Hmm. Authentic advice in an artificial age. JoelPatterson.com is where you can find more of this. Joel, it was uh, I, I really loved hearing you today. So thank you so much for, for being here with us. Take care. Thank you, Carl. Bye -bye. Take care.